So here's our mashup of the interface we're doing for the renderer, add geometry and add renderables, and, and then we can update the where's. So we have our renderer here. I actually want to make these functions, uh, define them to have them do their jobs. So let's do add geometry first, because we have to add a geometry first. And that will return a geometry pointer. Add geometry. Geometry. And it looks like for arguments we need to take vector 3D pointers and U shorts and that sort of thing. So uh, math colon colon vector 3D 3D pointer verts uh, U int numverts numverts with a capital V and then U short pointer. Uh, indices? Why do we use sh use short for indices? Why not uints or bytes or that sort of thing? Well, generally indices go greater than 255, which is the max value for a byte. Uints are four bytes, and u shorts are two bytes. And generally, I know we're dealing with some very small geometries here, just some triangles. But when we load up large models, we want it to be as compact as possible. And it turns out two bytes are general. In fact, I've never needed more than two bytes to indicate the indice position or the indice value for the vertice position in the vertex array so uh, a u short's good because it's as com it's it's compact but it's big enough u uh, int u int num indices like so and of course to get u int and u short in here we're going to have to pound include miscellaneous type defs and then to get this here, again, we're just passing a pointer in here. We're simply declaring a function. We're not defining it yet. So I'll go as far as saying namespace math class vector 3D, like so. That's going to keep our header file as lean and mean as possible. Now we're going to do add renderable. So renderable star add renderable. And that will take a geometry pointer or pointer to some geometry and maybe to be consistent, I don't know I'll just stick with that, it looks like I have a, a G here and then uh, the the squigglies, uh, you know how much I trust IntelliSense squigglies but but there's a problem of saying, hey, I don't know what a geometry is so how am I going to give you a pointer to that well we're not using the geometry we're not saying where on a renderable or anything in the header file so again uh, in this rendering namespace I'll go as far as to be lean and mean I'll say class geometry class renderable and now I can have pointers to them and the squigglies go away uh, let's define these functions now control C render namespace rendering control V shift tab uh, whoops render rer and control C Put our curlies in. Same thing here, add renderable. Maybe I'll have to scroll out a little more. Just to, uh, uh, I'm pushing the limit on the line width and what I should do in a video, but maybe we'll stick with that. Make sure you turned up to high definition. So to add a geometry, it's real simple. We need to store the pointer to the verts, and basically we need to store all this information in a geometry. Let me drag geometry over here so we can see it side by side. Uh, so where should we create the memory for this geometry? If you notice we're, we're somewhere in the 160s, 170s on the number of videos in this playlist and hopefully you've noticed I have yet to call new. New is an operator, goes out to the heap, allocates some RAM and brings up memory management and a whole bunch of other stuff I can do tons of videos on. I am avoiding calling new as much as possible. Why? Because there's issues with calling new. It kind of fragments our memory. We need to be cache coherent. Blah 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 blah. I'm not going to talk about it here and confuse you. For now, I'm, the general rule is avoid new, and we'll talk about why as as need comes up. So, where are we going to store our geometries? Okay, I'm I'm trying to avoid new as po much as possible. I could instantiate these things. I could create one on the stack, but then that's useless once the functions return. The memory's gone. I could do it statically. I could go up here and maybe nest in a namespace or that sort of thing. But I could say geometry 
geometries and do a 10 like so I could all these sort of options I think my best option for what I'm trying to do and since we're building such a simple game is I'm just going to put it inside of the renderer class here so I'll say geometry geometries and now when or no no sorry that needs to go inside the renderer forgive me when the compiler wants to instantiate a renderer it needs to know the size of a geometry and multiply that by 10 okay a renderer is now composed of 10 geometries so now saying class geometry is no longer good because the the, the compiler can't figure out what's what what's a geometry made of what size should this be I, I needed to fill in the size of a render so now we're forced to do the pound include for geometry pound include uh, rendering geometry and by the way we're going to do the same with renderable renderable and you might think Jamie why didn't you just do that in the first place well I wanted you to learn something control shift s geometries this is a magic number let's get rid of magic numbers they're bad I can define a constant inside of a class header as long as it is static why because the compiler essentially copies and pastes that con that constant value around whereas if it's not static then it becomes a member of the class and I have to initiate and in, in initialize that constant per instance of the class you're probably thinking Jamie why are you throwing so much technical stuff at me well hopefully that's something you understand and it's just a reminder but if it's not something you understand then go watch the videos on constants static constants that sort of thing all these little nitty-gritty details in the C++ language but it's important to be aware of them understand them and program to them but I am going to make this static I'm gonna say you int max geometries gets 10 how about num max geometries I read code complete one time and I think the one thing I got out of it was was to prefix number variables with num. Uh, I'm just kidding. There's a lot of other good stuff in there, but but that's one thing I do remember from that book. So now the compiler, when it creates an instance of a renderer, knows to make it the size of ten geometries. Uh, control T. Ten geometries with a number of or ten geometries. And I'm not really doing very well with the spelling here. I must be I must be tired or hungry. Actually, I think I'm both. Okay, no geometries. Now, what's the advantage to this? Well, the advantage to this, and what I mean by this is making this array embedded inside of our renderer class. The advantage to it is I don't have to call new. I don't have fragmentation. It's more cache friendly. The disadvantage is I'm stuck with 10. Now, say this number I put up to something big, you know, say, let's do a really big number. Well, that's just kind of stupid, because what if we only add two or three geometries? I've just wasted all this RAM for just two or three objects. So defining a static constant here that's not changeable, not dynamic, I can't change it at runtime, that's what dynamic means. Defining this this way limits me that way, but the advantage is it's more cache coherent, it's embedded in here, that sort of thing. Anyway, that's a debate for another time. For now, just roll with me. We'll put it at 10, and we'll put a check in to make sure we don't add any more than 10. Static, uint. In fact, I'm actually gonna go hardcore. I know I'm only adding two geometries, one for the boundaries, the diamond boundaries, and one for the ship. So I'm going to put two there even though it's kind of bad. Now I've, I've said, well, I'm customizing this number for my game. That's bad. <laughs> but I don't want to waste the time in this video debating about it, so let's just roll with it. Static uint, num, max, renderables. Gets, uh, I know we're going to have three. There's going to be one for the diamond and and uh, two for the ships, so I'll do three. No, let's just do ten on both. <sighs> I'm making this way. I am analyzing this way more than I need to. Uh, renderable. Uh, renderables. Num max renderables. Like so. And now, when we add a geometry, I'm going to bring this header file over here we add a geometry we simply need to uh, get one of these these elements in the array and assign all the stuff to that element and roll forward so we actually need another int here I'm gonna say u int control u uh, num geometries and u int num renderables 
uh, we need a constructor. No, we don't need a constructor. Let's do the initialize. I'm going to be consistent with initialize and deinitialize or shutdown. Initialize and shutdown. In fact, while I'm at it, bool shutdown. Grab both of these. Control C. Uh, go over here. Let's define them. Now you may think, Jamie, all you need to do is initialize these two things to zero. Do it in the constructor. And I would agree. In fact, if you look at the Google standard, they're big on if you just have some primitive values like ints and pointers and those that kind of things. Yes, make a constructor. Yes, initialize it to zero. That sort of thing. But uh, the reason why I'm going to do it in the initialize is if I shut down and then I want to reinitialize, well, the initialize should zero these values out, both num geometries and num renderables. But if I do it with a constructor, the initialize won't do that for me. Okay, I've been bit in the backside by that because I initialized or set some default values of zero to some 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 primitive types of my class. I did that in the constructor, and then I shut down and reinitialized, and all of a sudden I had like three renderables, and I hadn't done anything. So that's why I'm going to say renderer initialize uh, num geometries. Get zero. Num renderables get zero as well. Now I can reinitialize, shut down, reinitialize, shut down, reinitialize all I want to, and I will zero these out. Return true. You may think, Jamie, <laughs> there's no way this is going to fail. Why did you set up an error code situation? Well, pretty soon we're going to see initialization and shutdown, but essentially, if I bring back my my game here. My game is the boss man, and it's going to say chip initialize, lerp initialize, rendering initialize, physics initialize, input initialize, everything initialized. And inside of these systems are little subclasses or subsystems and that sort of thing. And, and so basically, I want this big tree, if you would, of calls that go downward and pass all the way back Boolean saying, yep, we're good, yep, we're good. If you ever watched Apollo 13 or Space Movies where they where they go through each gr crew one by one and they say, yep, check, yep, check, yep, check, we're good to go, that sort of thing. That's what I'm doing with this Boolean. So even, and you may even think, Jamie, why are you even writing a shutdown to return a true? That's so lame. And I would kind of agree with you. Except I've been doing this long enough that I like to be consistent. If a class requires initialize, then I'm going to have a shutdown. We're going to return booleans. Now, a problem with booleans is that they're either true or false. They don't tell us what problem happened. Okay, it's either true, yep, we're good to go, or false, no, we're not good to go. Uh, how are we going to indicate the error that happened? Well, I'll show in a future video after we do the refactoring that we'll make a logging system and an assertion system, and if there's a problem, we'll dump the error out to a log file and we'll return false saying there's a problem and then whoever tried to initiate the game can look in the log file and see oh there was an error here let's respond to that so there you go I'm pontificating num geometries num renderables inside of an initialize so initialize shut down I should probably make shut down part of renderer here uh, add geometry add geometry should be pretty straightforward I'm going to use the built-in Oopsie. Pound include C assert. I'm going to use the built in C assert function just to assert some state conditions. Uh, later, we're, we're going to build our own assert because I, like, I want it tied in with our logging system to indicate errors. But for now, just for the refactoring, I'm going to assert that num geometries is not equal to the number of max geometries. If num geometries is equal to the number of max geometries, I cannot add the geometry you're trying to have me add. Geometry, reference, victim, target, G, I don't care what you call it. Geometries, sub num geometries, plus plus. So I'm grabbing, sorry, let me get this up where you can see it. I'm grabbing a reference to one of the geometries inside of the array, and it's real simple. G dot uh, verts vertices. I should be consistent with my naming. Vert vertices. Control C. Go back to the header file, which I guess is over here. Rename that. So vertices gets vertices. G dot num verts. Oh, now I use verts instead of vertices. Ah, whatever. Numverts, 
g dot uh, indices gets indices, the indices that were passed in. g dot num indices gets the number of indices. And then return address of g. Okay, remember we're returning a pointer to our g. We could return a reference here, but then it would be up to the caller to turn it into a pointer. References are kind of difficult to work with outside of the scope of a single function. Right here I like the reference because then I can use the dot, but notice I'm just using that inside of the scope of a single function. So I'm actually okay there. Uh, what's it complaining about? Add geometry. I don't know. We'll see what the compiler says later. Add renderable. This is very much the same as uh, add geometry. Assert num renderables is not equal to the number of max renderables. If it is, we don't have any more room. Renderable reference r gets renderables. Renderables. Didn't I call it renderables? I did call it renderables. Renderables sub num renderables plus 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 r dot what gets the geometry and r dot where uh, remember our, our default constructor for the matrix types will make the identity matrix so I think we're okay there nothing really extra to do return the address of r there we go there's add geometry add renderable initialize shut down Nothing too fancy quite yet. In the next videos, we're, we're getting closer. we got to connect with OpenGL and render these geometries out using the renderables.